actually can face because BDS dropping down or Vitality dropping down to 3-1 lately has led to them facing each other in the semi-finals and I'm sure neither of those teams have been enjoying that. Yeah, I think that that's really, for me, one of the main storylines to watch throughout this weekend and to watch throughout today's broadcast is are we going to see any mistakes from BDS and Vitality? Are we going to see any of the other teams in the region step up and give them a loss on the record? Because if they don't, BDS and Vitality get on the opposite side of the bracket for the playoff next weekend, and that makes it a whole lot more difficult for other teams to start catching up to them in the standings. Oh, that's going to be a good start from BDS. Key to victory for them is just going to be that unrelenting pressure that we have seen so often. On the other side, it is the shooting proficiency in Devo. Ooh. Well, that was cheeky. Right under the defender, and BDS were routed to the floor. Yeah, very nice placement by Devo. Like you said, it was an attempted block up high from the BDS defender, and going slow actually caught them off guard. Now, BDS are willing to take on anybody in that kind of race style of gameplay. I think they're easily one of the fastest teams in the world. They can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody in that regard. So it could be a play style that Barca try to go for, to try and play that more controlled style, um, play for the possession, play for the 50-50s, um, and try to play reactively. That's a complete miss, actually, by Mark on an uncontested shot. You don't expect to see too many of those, given how consistent BDS the season has been. Certainly not. Here comes a taxi to try and make it two. Shot wasn't quite on target anyway. And Rodicky dives on wow. in. Devo will be by himself against Extra. Looks for the backboard. Double tap attempt. Oh. Off the crossbar. Oh. And followed by Mark. Rodicky's dive in caused so much hassle for the rest of the team. Oh, it's a really difficult position to be in. I mean, Monkey Moon is just so fast to that ball. Rodicky thought he could get there. He thought he could match him for speed. He was wrong. And in the follow up, Devo is not facing the right uh, direction to even think about challenging extra. And with how good extra is at those double touch positions, Devo had to assume that was on target. He just had to dive at it. Um, and you know, the fact that it's hit the bar has actually helped BDS. Nice touch there by Itachi. And another one of those uh, plays that goes underneath the BDS who are pre-jumping into a lot of their challenges right now. Devo up yet again, looking for Ronaki. BDS deceptively quick in so many situations where you look at the ball, you look at your opponent, and you think, oh, okay, she'll have that quite easily. But wow. Devo lands on the ball. This could be a good chance to set up. Extra can't follow up on the backboard. And Barca just had no one ready for it. Can't really blame them for that. Yeah, the demo came in. The supporting player got taken out of the game. So that meant the third man attached. He just couldn't close the gap in time. That's good play from BDS in the midfield. One way to completely stifle an attack is to snipe that player who's waiting mm. for the center ball. No, it's not something new either. BDS will launch the first player with the full intent of turning around and catching the third man on their rotation back. There's a lot of boost for it, but usually BDS has got such good control that they don't have to worry about boost management. Tachi watches the play come towards him. That's back into the midfield. Ronicky at least gets a block, but here oh. is that stifling pressure. Is anyone going to be able to stop this? Extra. Had to buy a little bit of time. There was a double commit, but this is BDS where oh, they want to be. Off the backboard, Ronicky sits on the goal line. Tachi has to cut through. And Barca do a good job to survive that one. Yeah, that was huge by Itachi. He was the only player who could make a play on that ball. And he was the only player who could clear it afterwards. Yeah, he managed to do both of those things, bailing his team out of a troublesome situation and also giving them a counter-attacking chance. You know, that's a big aspect of the game right now in Europe, is can you turn these defensive positions into the quick transitional plays straight down the middle? You know, fans and people online love to talk about the differences between EU and NA playstyle. For me, it's all about the route that teams take to the goal. BDS, they don't mess around. And uh, <laughs> Barcelona, likewise. If they can see a direct route straight towards the opposition net, they're going to take it. Um, you know, NA, a bit more side to side, a bit more scenic in the approach. It's going to be a good clear across. It's become a, a challenge almost between both these teams. See who can clear the ball better. No, BDS are good at it, but it's interesting to see how Barca have managed to do. Can't afford for any mistakes. That one came very close, and they have given up territory. Attaching, he wanted that boost. That's the play Ooh. done. And a bit of a miscommunication. Barca are stuck on this side of the field yet again. They've got to try and figure out a way through. Monkey Moon's going to just wait for it. Pre-jumps the wow. touch. He's now off the ceiling. <laughs> Looks to follow. How do you get out of this stranglehold that BDS have put Barca in? Well, you know, one way to get out of it is not to boost starve your own teammate mm. who's about to make a play on the ball. I don't know if I agree with that um, play. I can't remember. I didn't uh, see if it was Ronicky or Devo, but 
it's almost always the the play to leave the boost for the player who's about to go onto the ball in those positions because the player behind you he can drive around the edge of the box pick up a few small pads um you know it's situationally it is still fine to just let the ball carrier continue boost starved and take a 50 50 but that didn't look like a, a thought really uh, a thought through play it, it definitely just looked like a chaotic moment for barca here is bds looking ah. to try and take it before overtime I actually do quite like the idea of putting it off the backboard. Uh, it's going to be Devo can't get contact. And this is something that BDS also do so well. We've you know, talked about numerous things that BDS do well, but that is just how good they have been. They are very good at that split second decision making between am I going to shoot this on target or am I going to put this off the backboard? Either way, Bars have to dive up to the ball and try and block them. If they go for the backboard, that's a defender gone. Dude, that was just relentless. What a second half of the game from BDS. They'll feel like they should have won it in regulation, but if they can continue to pressure Barca for uh, or for the same kind of timeline, I would expect a goal to come. BDS beating them to the ball oh, quite wow. sufficiently. Double commits are coming in for Barca, but can you really blame them? Because this is just an unreal amount of pressure the BDS are putting on them. They're not giving Barca any time to communicate. And Barca needed that play from Devo so much. They can reboost, They're ready to redeploy. Mark on his hood. You see him trying to find a way past Devo, who did well. Longest time that we've seen Barca have control of the territory. Infield pass, looks for Ronicky. Ronicky's a good shooter, but do well to try and put, turn that one in. Will BDS live to regret not finishing off Barca when they had the opportunity in this game? Devo wants the pinch, not as heavy as he was after. And BDS starting to make a couple of mistakes defensively. Huge demo from Monkey Moon. Does pull in Ronicky. That backboard is covered. So far, so good from Barca. But here's a dive in yet again. And this is how they got the call for the last goal. Thankfully, Ronicky able to take control of it a bit easier. But it's a consistent issue for Barca. Yeah, they're just getting beaten to the punch. It's those uh, high balls that ping out into the middle of the field. Monkey Moon in particular has been so quick to them. And unless Barca can get up the absolute split second that the ball makes its way into those positions, they will get beaten to it because look how quick BDS are playing. <laughs> how quickly they're playing, sorry. Um, you, yeah, I, you asked, if, will BDS feel like they, uh, will they feel frustrated that they haven't put away Barca just yet? I don't think so because they haven't had any absolutely clear cut chances. They've had tons and tons of pressure, um, but they've not had any open net misses or anything like that. It's not great clear from Devo. Attachi up. Has to get a block, but he still ends up losing it. Ronicky goes on in. Well, the play so far from Barca is just clear and see if you can follow up with something. That is the third man gone, actually, for Barca. Ronicky caught into action. He'll be very happy not to have blasted himself into Attachi as he respawned. We've already saw yesterday one mishap on the respawn. Do not want to see another one just yet. Off the backboard, Ronicky. For Itachi, it's an awkward bounce. Mark fancies his chances, wants the double tap. You've got to get there if you're on a key. He has managed to do so. Second touch, oh, wow. of extra. Monkey Moon, always a presence though, defensively. This has been such a, a tense game one, Johnny. It's just relentless from BDS. The way that they're rotating out of offense is so interesting. They're choosing not to, you know, prioritize the fastest possible recovery path instead prioritizing demos as they leave the half of their opponents. Now, that's not a, a conventional method by all teams in the world, but BDS are just so confident. They're so fast and they have always, they, they always seem to have the boost advantage. They can afford to do that. Just stay in the other team's half for an extra second or so, get those demos on the way out and just keep Barca hamstrung. There's just no way for Barca to keep up with them. And Barca are not a slow team by any stretch of the imagination. I'd say they're one of the fastest teams in Europe, but BDS are just that step above. And do start towards looking towards Devo, especially in this sort of matchup where he has had a lot of success. Probably the most success on Barca in terms of his transition game. First touch leading to the mid-air challenge has been going well for him so far, but Barca got to figure out what to do after that. Almost four minutes of overtime played, and this is only game one. Ball bounces out. Here comes Monkey Moon. Oh. Put down the shot, and that forces a much oh. more awkward challenge. But Barca... Say what you want. They have been resolute with this defensive showing. And somehow, with nine minutes played, with this amount of pressure, they've only conceded one. 
Yeah, Barca playing so well. Veronica has seven saves at the moment. And the rest of his team have five between them. That's just a crazy number for a game one. Um, but they've needed every single one of those saves to keep BDS at bay. Now BDS coming out. More awkward angles. Double touch, center ball. Oh, oh Mark's landed on the shots. The recovery had him just in the worst possible position. I'm not sure if that was on target, but it was definitely close for BDS. <laughs> That's, I think, the best chance they've had. Okay, so now are they frustrated? Yeah, now they're, now they're frustrated. <laughs> Monkey yes, Moon. now they are. <laughs> back into the midfield. Extra. This backboard's become less and less of an option. Bars is starting to live up here, but it does open up the infield if BDS want to take it. Monkey Moon to Ronicky. Ronicky can actually go for a pass oh and play, but Monkey Moon goodness. recovers. <laughs> Look at plays like that. You think, okay, that's one player going. BDS is going to have to put another one in, but Monkey Moon just so good. They can stick around, but this is a good playable position actually for Barca. It's not a game that you feel like they were the better team in, but they're still one goal away from taking it. Attached oh, shot across, what? and it is slightly off target. But Barca starting to prod. They're starting to look towards their opportunities. And if it falls to the right man, it could very oh, well wow. be it. Devo Again? makes the awkward. Looks for Mark, oh. and Mark's still able to get there in time. That's twice in a row. The BDS have just completely missed the ball as it comes across the box. They've looked invincible up until now. And all of a sudden, two mistakes in a row, that will give Barca some hope, especially given the fact that BTS have saved one of their own shots in, a, in very recent time. This is crazy, what a game. Only game one of a potential five in round two of a top 16 stage in Europe. I mean, this is the level we come to expect from the region these days. Um, we're asking earlier, who's gonna step up and challenge BDS and Vitality? Well, hats off to Barca. If they could defend like this for another few games, then they definitely can. Ronicky in. He needs to start finding those second touches. One blasting clear is not going to do it against BDS. Here's the follow. Oh, oh, oh. Monkey Moon can't get past Tachi. Extra. Unchallenged. And oh, it's a great for you. What? Mark can't put it in. And we keep on playing. How on earth have Barca get that out of the net? I just don't understand. I mean, you have to double commit in positions like that. You have to just send everybody because that is going in. And nobody seems to be able to stop it. But somehow Barca have combined their efforts to get a team save and keep BDS in a 1-1 score. Okay, the mm. frustration meter is rising. <laughs> now, earlier on, BDS were probably quite happy with how the match is going. Now, they'll be less than happy because, yes, they've had an unfortunate save on their own shot with Mark Payet landing in the ball. Now, Barca have somehow kept the ball out of the line, just barely as it crosses it. Yes, BDS discipline is definitely being tested. Oh, that's going to be oh, a the bump. back. Veronica. Happy to see that one away, but Barca weren't in control of their destiny there. And the pass to Itachi too far ahead of him. Seven minutes of overtime. And this is the first <laughs> game of our broadcast. You know Barca. there's going to be a kickoff goal as soon as the next game starts. Oh, the this. next game, the game is, game like is going to start off. It's just how it is. Two kickoff goals. I'm saying to, to BDS <laughs> in the next game. Yeah, it's going to be three goals in but 15 seconds. But we'll figure seconds. out <laughs> how we're going to get there. Itachi off the backboard. There's no quick follow up, but. Barca almost just seems shocked whenever they get a ball in the other side of the field that they can actually play. They've got to start feeling a bit more confident. They've got to be willing to send in that follow-up shot because the one time they have done it, you know, Ronicky was caught out, but they've got to get that confidence to go for it yet again because you're not going to 1v3 but BDS. Double commit yet oh. again. They've got to recover. Ronicky. Oh my goodness. It. Well, I suppose that one worked. <laughs> Devo, we've seen every single different way to try and save a ball in this one. This has been <laughs> it's ridiculous. absolutely incredible. I mean, that was a team pool shot clear. I don't think I've ever seen that before. It, it was the most effective play in the position. How is a team pool <laughs> shot clear the best play? What is going on? But Barca are really innovating defense at the moment, um, showing double commits can be effective. Oh, That's my. the crossbar from BDS and another one. Mark's up for the double. Oh. oh my goodness, just over eight minutes gone. Mark breaks the deadlock. Wow, did they have to work for that one? And breathe. 2-1. We played 13 minutes of Rocket League. And Barca with one of the most impressive defensive showings we have ever seen. Would have been right up there had they gone on to get the win. But instead, it's a Mark Brace that takes them 1-0 on the side of BDS. And we look at this now, Johnny, and we say, well, where do we go from here? 
Wow, 21 shots from BDS. 21 uh, mm. shots. I mean, you think that, oh yeah, of course there's 21 shots. There's 13 minutes of gameplay, but that's still, you know, a lot of shots per minute for uh, this kind of a uh, length of game. You know, BDS were absolutely smashing the backboard. They were firing so many on target and Barca, I think there was only maybe one moment where they were at the mercy of BDS, the, where, the one time where Mark accidentally fell on top of his teammate's shot and blocked it. Apart from that, Barca had somebody at least attempting to save every other one of those shots. Eight saves by Ronicky. Um, we didn't get to see much in offense from Barca. They, they, I think they had a little spell in that overtime where finally BDS made a couple of mistakes and Barca had opportunities. but. For the most part, they were just stuck in their half. They're getting demoed every time they try and leave. They're getting their boost stolen when they're there. They didn't have uh, enough momentum at any stage in this game to really pose a real threat to BDS. The closest mm -hmm. that we saw BDS to losing that game was when they themselves missed the ball. Yeah, and it's sort of a, a bit of a, a dampener to put on what was quite honestly a fantastic game. But you do have to turn around analytically and say, well, as much of a spectacle as that was, Barca, uh, you do that, you're not winning this series. There is absolutely no hope of it. They've got to figure out some way to get a foothold in the midfield. And, oh, well, there we go. There's the first you. goal. And my <laughs> 5 3 prediction is very much on the cards. It always happens. You know, it's super long overtime. You can guarantee there's going to be a goal in the next 15 seconds of the first mm -hmm. or the next game. There it is. Perfect infield pass from Ronicky. Devo is ready for it. And that's kind of what they need to be doing, just supporting quickly. If they can uh, just almost cheat up into those positions when center balls and passes are coming in, then they can balance out that speed differential that we've got between these two teams. Because clearly BDS, are, you know, they're a slight, slight bit quicker uh, to the punch than Barca. But if Barca can just position more effectively, this can still be an even matchup. Yeah, they got to figure out how to deal with a team that is, well, pre-jumping oh all the time. That's just what BDS do. So your options there, either try and out position them or you start pre-jumping as well. And I don't really feel like that's a good idea. If you bass that <laughs> extra for the backboard. Good long clear actually for Ronicky. Monkey Moon's gonna have to try and deal with this. Ronicky could have just got that little bit extra power. I know that's pushing for, you know, gold out of a situation where he did really well anyway. But they'll be looking to try and make this awkward right now. And BDS, don't push that third man too far forward. It's something that's very interesting to note that no matter how good they are at holding the midfield, it almost feels like you have to get past one player and then there's another one sweeping up right behind them. Well, yeah, you'll often associate these super uh, fast, very aggressive teams like BDS. You'll think that they've, they've just constantly attacked with all three players, but that's really not the case. Like you mentioned, their third man positioning is quite well reserved and it has to be Oh, that's just bounced in. 1-1, one, one. Monkey Moon gets the credit. Um, there was nobody challenging this ball. That's the main problem here. It's actually just got completely boost starved. Couldn't catch up with Monkey Moon. What a goal steal that is, by the way. Just <laughs> Monkey Moon <laughs> letting it bounce off the top of his head. But I was, I was gonna, you know, before that uh, rude goal, the rude interrupt from Monkey Moon, agree with you that yes, uh, BDS do, had, they have to hold back with the third man just a little bit because the rotations out are always looking for those demos, always looking for those boost steals. Um, you know, they're not as quickly uh, to the defense as they could be. Mm. And it has caused, you know, a bit of weirdness for some teams as well that have been less familiar with them because they do try and engage in those power clears, but because that third man is so far back from BDS, it's actually quite easy for them to work with. So we do have extra looking to try and follow up his touch. Barca a bit loose in terms of defensive rotation. They weren't too quick to it. Attacking. Oh, wow. What a play this is. What? He's going to look to try and follow up, gets the challenge that he needs. It's not a great position for Barca. And what's even worse is when you've got a player gone. That was incredible. Itachi actually got three touches in the ball. I think that the only one that Monkey Moon read was the first one. The other two, he probably just thought, okay, yeah, he's got me. <laughs> that was a good play. Fair enough. Well, what a read. Mark actually had a flip. Doesn't need it. Monkey Moon's got the finish. But Mark by eight. If he had finished this one off by himself, that would have easily been a contender for goal of the day. He had a reset, I believe. <laughs> I just couldn't get goal on the opposite side of the ball. But yeah, the, the setups for BDS are proven to be quite challenging. BDS just always do the exact same thing to teams. Exactly what you just saw from Itachi, actually, where they get that one extra touch that you don't think they're actually capable of. They do that all the time. They play the ball off the backboard, maybe one extra touch than you're expecting. They, in the transition, get an extra touch that, you know, you don't want them to have. It makes reading their transitions and reading their offense so difficult. It's gonna go out. Ronicky, 
Good first touch from him. I'm glad to see he's not blasting it anymore. Wow. I already know that Ronaki, very solid when the ball is actually on his hoodie, just doesn't let himself do it all that often. And he was the one player I had a slight issue with in that last game where Devo and Atachi were trying to play the ball out. Ronaki was blasting it directly into a waiting BDS. I like the traditional air dribble as well. We saw a lot of success um, with the just the straight up air dribbles from Mets and Oris in the last regional for Europe. Um, you know, with the the rising popularity of flip resets and uh, you know air dribble 50-50s or air dribble demos, just anything involving some trickery, the the actual just vanilla air dribble becomes a lot more effective. It's harder to anticipate. It's harder to expect when uh, it just comes at you in a position where a reset was available. But speaking of Devo. Getting an outplay with one, but ronicky has been read uh, by Monkey Moon, who, by the way, you know, Monkey Moon, we talk about his mechanics and his speed. His positioning and his reading of the game has been outstanding in this mm. series. Uh, just, the, what, just look at the way he moves off the ball. He's always in position for everything that comes towards him. Always gives himself a chance to make a play on every ball. Yeah, there's been a lot of discussion of mechanics versus brain. I know you've had a couple of matches to try and show off which one's better, yep, but yep. I feel like Monkey Moon's very difficult to lump into one of those categories. I feel like he's just so mechanically good, but he's, he's also both. got the smarts with it. You know, it's oh, really yeah. difficult to look at him and just go, oh, well, you know, if he was in the right position, he'd be even better. He's always in the right position, and he's so difficult to work with. Here is Mark. We've already seen in the pre-show just how good some of those dribbles of his can be. Can't quite get anything this time around as the backboard will be covered. They've got to find a follow-up here, though, for Barster. Otherwise, they are going to be two games down. Yeah, BDS just have it all right now. Monkey Moon is just... He's controlling this game. He's controlling every... Well, both games we've seen so far. Um, Mark by eight. Con to continues to, for me, be rookie of this of the, of this uh, season. Um, remember that this is his first time playing at the very highest level of RLCS, coming out of the Rival Series in Season 9. Um, an extra, it's such an unpredictable force to be reckoned with. Whenever BDS do need some spice to catch the other team off guard, he's the one who'll bring it. And yeah, Barca, they've played well. They look like one of the best teams in Europe, but they do not look like they're able to take this series against a BDS who are just that step above. This is crazy to see. Um, and I predicted this to go to game five. I'm not too confident anymore. Yeah, it's, um, it's been incredibly impressive from BDS. They have turned this one around. They've shown that even if you are a team that is playing well, they are just that much faster than you. They are that much quicker to get their plays going. And you know, for Barca, if the word came up during the pre-show, quality loss. If they end up making this next one at least close, I feel like this sort of follows that saying of quality loss because they have not looked bad here. And you put this version of Barca against, you know, a lot of other teams in the region, a lot of teams that we are expecting to make it into the playoffs. And you say, right, this version of Barca could probably beat them or make it competitive. But against BDS that's on form, good luck. Shogun, you might, I don't know if you've seen me wide eyed on the camera there. There's a good reason Vitality have lost Ooh. round oh, two. I knew it was going to happen. All right, we got the semi-final locked in. Uh, I'm doubly happy because that means Gibbs is wrong, which always makes me happy. He didn't get his 3-0 prediction for How today, but also <laughs> Galaxy Racer and the team have taken them down. So, you know, the team that we're all talking about as the underdog, I guess we're, we're right on that one as well. So this is just a great day uh, already. Not only that, we get to watch another game of BDS versus Barca. I couldn't be happier. And we get to see another game of Monkey Moon styling on the European scene. Extra, no nonsense with this. Right in up the top of the crossbar and Monkey Moon. It's almost, it almost just seems a bit basic by BDS standards. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's just a very good finish. Oh, of yeah. course he puts it in off the bar. It's Monkey Moon. Of course it would be a perfect shot, even though there is plenty of goal to aim at. He's got plenty of goal to aim at there. It's nice to go high because um, there was a goalkeeper sitting. Um, inside the net, so anything lower than the bar would probably be saved. But yeah, this is a tough one for Barca. You know, you're talking about quality loss for them. I think even if they get swept here, this is still a quality loss. <laughs> They've mm. done well. They've played very well. And, you know, the, res the result doesn't always tell the full story. The fact that this looks like it's headed towards a 3-0 doesn't really do justice to how well Barca have played. And we're going to get to see more from them in offense later right, on. Actually, that works. That no, was a good right. save. Stop innovating. <laughs> Stop innovating. We get it. You can save the ball in a hundred different ways. I feel like there's, you know, maybe two or three ways that might look a bit safer. True, true. You know, that that's what they've been forced to do when they play against BDS. They need to just defend magnific magnificently. Look at this. Another <laughs> phenomenal save. 
<laughs> How have they pulled that off? It's working. Barca. I mean, we're, we're going to get to see if they can produce get this kind of offense against every other team in the region oh, later on today. But for us, BDS, it's only defense. That's the only thing we're getting to see them do. And he's going to need to get uh, oh, that's General open. in as this is going to be 2-0. Wow. Oh, we're going to follow the 2-1, 2-1, 2-1 script. We're going to need to see a goal, at least from Barca. And yep, once again, nice and simple. They see that the third man is gone. And it's that execution of the play every single time. Rotating back, you see a player that should be coming in next for Barca. You wipe that player off the map. Yeah, every time I... I'm just so impressed by the mark by eight um, going into this season. I wasn't really sure if he was at that top level. I knew he had the potential, but I felt like it might take multiple seasons for him to level up to that mm. um, to that kind of conversation. I knew Monkeyman, everybody knew Monkeyman is already in that conversation. You know, we're talking best player in, in Europe uh, conversation. But Mark has been unreal. The improvement that he has had between season nine of RLCS and season X, it is absolutely crazy. Easily for me, the rookie of the season so far, including NA. Nobody is playing anywhere near at this level. Is off None of the, the rookies, board. at least. Yeah, certainly not. This has been... I mean, the rookie... We've got to see so many rookies this season. This mm -hmm. reason why I do love the new format is that we have been exposed to... You know, so many players that are getting opportunities as shot was wide, but BDS making sure of it. You know, we have got players like Mark. Oh, we've man. got players like Archie over on top blokes. There's so many that, you know, might not have got an opportunity under the old format. And it's been fantastic to see them have an opportunity to, you know, try and make their dreams come true oh. as a pro player. Oh, as... no! Okay, oh, well, we no. found the one defensive style that doesn't quite work for Barca. They tried option 102. <laughs> last the ball at my own net. Uh, that one can go up as a failure, El General. Yeah. The panic was a bit real there. Tachi was going for his own post. He's actually, well, he, he did hit the post, but it went in after he hit the post. He was supposed to hit the post and then have the ball either bounce clear or into the corner. I'm not sure what exactly he was planning, but uh, that wasn't it. And no. yeah, this one looks completely gone. Two minutes left, but with how dominant Barca have been, I don't think Barca, are, or I, I don't, dominant BDS have been, I don't think Barca are going to get three realistic chances to score, far less uh, take all three of them. But BDS, what a statement to take down Barca, you know, we're already talking about to win in two minutes left. <laughs> Farmer World Champion is. Devo, Ronicky playing Itachi is another, by the way, one of the outstanding rookies uh, uh, coming in this season. But yeah, BDS are just that good. And uh, with Vitality dropping a series um, against Galaxy Racer, this has to be the team to beat once again. Yeah, and this is, you know, a bit of a story that we see over and over again, you know, especially in the grand finals, John, when we've had the chance to cast BDS at that level, there were so many times we turned around and just went, hey, games one and two were fantastic. But the other team didn't take a win against them. Giants especially felt like this. Yeah. Where once they lost the first two, it just felt like it was done. You know, the second half of the series was just a formality. They figure you out as they go along. And it's not necessarily obvious changes. They're not widespread adjustments, but they do enough to make games free onwards that much more convincing. Well, the, the, the scary thing about BDS, and at least as far as this performance uh, appears to be, is that they have just been completely consistent throughout all of this. I think we maybe saw two misses in that eight minute overtime. And, you know, it's an eight minute overtime. Things like that are bound to happen. It's a very, Rocket League's such a hard game um, with absolutely no rest time in between plays. Um, it's when we're talking 3v3, uh, especially in eight minute overtime, we don't even have, they don't even have kickoffs to, um, to, you know, just put your controller down, shake off your fingers, take a breather and get ready for the next play. No, the, like if, if you're only making mistakes in an eight minute overtime and the mistakes you're making are backed up by teammates who have you covered, yeah, that's a pretty good position to be in. BDS look absolutely terrifying right now, mechanically and positionally. Are they going to finish off with another goal? Why not? Oh, it's going to be the post for Monkey Moon. But yeah, overall, this is a 10 out of 10 performance for me. BDS look incredible. Barca also look pretty good. You know, I think they were just they were just done after mm -hmm. losing the second game. They were probably just thinking, yeah, this is just an art. It's not a day where we're going to beat BDS, is it? We're going to have to come back at round three and uh, pick it up from there. Yeah, certainly so. I mean, look at how good BDS can be. And yeah, we're looking at this and they can go better. That's the thing. They can play that much better. They can play that much quicker. But they saw what Barca wanted to do and they just sort of played into it. To Barca's credit, 
from an outside looking in, this looks like, oh, well, you got 3-0, you know, 3-0 in the final game. Eh, it was pretty, pretty easy for BDS, but for Barca, mm. they showed us something that we haven't necessarily seen from them. You know, we talk so much about how offensively good they can be. We now know that when they're up against the Siege, they can also hold on quite well. They just got to figure out how to get out. And maybe BDS is not the team to try yeah. and figure that out against. So BDS move on to 2-0. Vitality somehow knocked down to 1-1. One, one. We're going to figure out how all of this plays out very soon. So when we come back from a quick break, it's time for round three.